Is everyone ready? Let's get ready for chemistry! Ah! All right, let's say we want to make a 0 0.1 molar solution of K2CrO4 and we're going to use a 1000 mil volumetric flask. We need to do the calculations to figure out how much mass to use because K2CrO4 is a solid. So in the lab, we'll be measuring this out by its mass because it's solid. So I want to start with the quantity rather than the ratio. This gives me moles. Now to convert from moles to grams, I'll need the molar mass. Now on the bottle, we see that the molar mass is 194.21. It's always safer to find the molar mass on the bottle because if it's a hydrate, that'll say, and they'll have calculated the molar mass for us already. So if the bottle is lying around somewhere, then make sure that you check it for the formula weight, the molar mass, which is 194.21. So this comes out to be 19.421 grams of K2CrO4. That's what we're going to shoot for. Once we've correctly calculated the mass that we're going to need, the next step is to actually weigh it out. So we'll take our weigh boat and we'll put it on the balance and we'll zero the weigh boat on the balance and then we will add the pre-calculated mass. Now you could use a metal scoopula, but I prefer just to gently add it from the bottle itself. So I'm not keeping too steep of an angle and I'm tapping it to make the solute come out. I don't want to overshoot it because I have no way to put it back in the bottle again. So I'm just going to be very careful. 19.421. 19.421 Getting pretty close. When I overshot it a little bit, but you know what? That's okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down the mass that I actually used. 19.445 instead of 19.421. But we didn't get 19.421 grams, and that's okay. What we got was 19.445 grams. So instead of trying to get exactly to 19.421, let's see what exactly we got instead. So this calculation will be going backwards to try to find the molarity now that we have the mass. So instead of finding a 0.1 molar solution, I found a 0.10012 molar solution, which is uh, sad, but it's not sad enough for me to care. So it's 0.1 out to three significant figures. I think that's pretty darn good. So then this is what I would put on the bottle. Now that I have my mass, it's time to add it to the volumetric flask. So here's my volumetric flask, and as you can see, it's empty right now. If I try to put the solute in, I'm going to run into some odd problems. So the very first thing I want to do is to put a little bit of water in here first. So I'm going to get some deionized water, and I'm going to fill this up about halfway. It doesn't really matter. I don't want to fill it up too much though. 
but I also want some water in there for, for when I put the solute in. So the next thing to do is to add the solute. So I get my solid solute. And I can tilt this. I can take my way boat and I can push the sides together. And that gives me kind of a, a funnel, a lip out of the way boat. And then if I take the volumetric flask and I tilt it, I can just add it directly from the way boat, like so. And then what I can do to get the rest of the solute out of there is I can pinch the sides together completely closed, put the mouth into the volumetric flask, and then flick it to get the rest out. Now if that still didn't get all of it out, the next thing I can do is take a DI wash bottle and I can rinse the way boat with the DI wash bottle, rinsing out the sides and then kind of swirl it around like I'm panning for gold. And then I can take that little bit and I can dump that in the volumetric flask as well. And if I don't feel like I got it all out, I can just repeat that process again. Just adding water from the wash bottle to rinse down the sides and then swirl it around. And that's why I didn't want to fill it up too much because I want to give myself room to use this kind of water. The next thing I want to do is maybe wash down the sides of the volumetric flask. As you can see here, there's still some bits of solid stuck to the side. So if I get my DI wash bottle and I rinse this down, it's probably not terribly important that I do this step, but I want to anyway. Just rinse down the sides. And you'll see why it's not that important in a second. Now I have something that looks like this, and as you can see, there's still solid in the bottom there. So what I want to do is I want to kind of pre-mix it right now by swirling it like so. And while I have air in here, it's going to make it possible for me to actually mix it by swirling. Once I fill up the volumetric flask, there's going to be less air to use to mix. And you can see the solid is starting to dissolve there. Now if my solution is too concentrated, this step might not completely dissolve it. And that's okay, because we're going to add the rest of the water in a second here. All right, now that I've got that kind of pre-dissolved, I'm going to continue to add water until it gets up to the fill line. So there's the fill line right there, and I'm going to continue to add water until it gets to that point. Actually, what I'm going to do is continue to add water until it gets to just before that point. So I'm adding water very slowly and very carefully. And the water I'm adding is washing down the inside of the neck of the volumetric flask anyway. So I didn't really have to rinse it down with the wash bottle, but, you know, it was nice all the same. Okay. Now at this point, here's the fill line. And I am nowhere near the fill line. That's okay, I'm in the neck now. So what I can do is I can fill this up with the wash bottle the rest of the way. Now if I tried to fill this up with the wash bottle from the start, I would be here forever. The wash bottle doesn't add very much. But you can see the level is increasing. So as I start to get close to the line, Here's the line right here, as I start to get close to it. I want to read the line from the bottom of the meniscus. Okay, so getting the camera down right on eye level. 
getting my eye right on eye level to look at the bottom of the meniscus right there. I want to continue to fill this up until the bottom of the meniscus is right on that line. And my angle's not perfect. The camera's a little bit lower than the meniscus, so it doesn't look quite right. And now we'll get the cap and we'll want to make sure that the cap is the right size for the volumetric flask we're looking for. So this is a 1000 mil volumetric flask and I have a 1000 mil cap, so that's correct. The next trick is how to get the cap onto the volumetric flask. The way to do it, and there's a little bit of a trick to it, you wrap your fingers around the neck and you use your thumb to put the cap on. Now if it's too hard, if it's too hard, and then by the way, this is also how you take the cap off. You wrap your fingers around the neck, just gently wrap your fingers around the neck, and then you use your thumb to roll the cap on, and you use your thumb to push the cap off. If it's too hard for me with one hand, then I can use two hands, right? I can use two hands, and then I can use both my thumbs to push the cap on. So I'm using two hands and they're overlapping and my thumbs going on under the cap and I'm just pushing the cap off with my thumbs. Put the cap on, my fingers wrapped around the neck of the flask and I'm going to just roll the cap on with my thumbs. The next thing to do is to mix it, and I know you think we already mixed it, but, but what we've got here is a gradient, and this is a lighter color here, and this is a darker color down there. That's because all the solute is still down here. If we left it out on the table long enough, it would get mixed just by Brownian motion. But what we want to do is we want to mix it ourselves. So what we'll do is we'll grab the volumetric flask by the top and by the bottom, and we'll invert it with the cap on snugly, and you can see how if the cap isn't on snugly, it's, it's gonna get all over the desk. We'll just invert it. And the bubble at the top here, the traveling bubble is what mixes it. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it every time I invert it. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a turn every time I invert it. So I'm kind of turning it just a little bit. Now if you don't want to invert and turn at the same time, then turn it and then invert it. Turn it and then invert it. But we want to turn it because we want the bubble to travel up and down the sides of the volumetric flask. It's the bubble traveling that does the mixing. And then I want to invert this as many times as it takes me to feel confident that I mixed it all up really good. Swirling this does nothing. With no bubbles in the bottom, with no bubbles in the bottom, swirling it doesn't do anything because the solution is not moving. It was the bubble, it was the air that was doing the mixing. And so now that I have the cap on and I have the solution filled up to the neck, the only thing that's mixing it now is the traveling bubble which moves when I invert the flask. The next step is to check and see if the solution is still on the bottom of the meniscus. Now remember that a solvent cage is always making the solution more dense than the pure solvent itself. So we may expect the level here to drop. The more concentrated our solution, the more solute we've added, the more we would expect the volume to decrease. And if it did, what I would need to do is I would need to take the cap off and I would need to refill it back up to the line, put the cap back on and continue inverting and rinse and repeat until I get to the point where after I've mixed it, the solution is still at the line. Now that the fly is gone, <laughs> 
we need to keep refilling it to the line until we get to the point where after we've mixed it, it stops decreasing. And then at that point, we'll be happy. The last thing to do is to label the container with what's really in here. And I can do that by writing on it with a permanent marker. And so it's got my molarity with the correct number of significant figures. And it's got what's in here. Now this isn't really the way to label it, but it's good enough for now. And voila, I have my solution and I'm ready to use it. And there's a fly and he's having a great time helping me explain solution chemistry. And I caught him in my hand and then I squished him because Comer be dope like that. And he needed to die. Okay. <laughs>